Hello and welcome. As we all know, cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual form of currency. It uses cryptography to have secure transactions. Cryptocurrency which is based on blockchain technology helps enable decentralized and transparent financial system thus eliminating the need to have regulators. Some of the well-known cryptos are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Dogecoin etc. In today's video, let's dig deep and talk about taxation of these cryptocurrencies from income tax perspective. Basically, we are going to find answer to three questions. One, if you sell or exchange cryptos or if you spend cryptos to buy goods or services, then how is income tax computed on such transactions? Two, if someone gifts or airdrops cryptocurrencies to you, then how much tax do you have to pay? Three, if you are into mining of cryptocurrencies, then what are the tax implications for you? Let's start with the definition of cryptocurrencies. In income tax law, cryptocurrencies are known as virtual digital assets, VDAs. And the meaning of VDAs is given in section 2 clause 47A of the Income Tax Act. In simple words, VDA is any information, code, number or token which provides digital representation of value and which can be transferred, stored or traded electronically. Non-fungible tokens are also VDAs. There are some exclusions here. 1. Currency, be it Indian or foreign, INR, USD, etc. These are not VDAs. 2. Digital gold is not a VDA. 3. Central bank backed digital currencies, that is e rupee which is launched by RBI, that is not a VDA. So, we can say that 1. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. 2. NFTs, non fungible tokens, that is identities, property rights, etc. of individuals, these two as of now are virtual digital assets. So whatever tax computation that we are talking today about cryptocurrencies is going to be equally applicable even to NFTs. Now that we have understood the meaning, let's talk about taxable event, that is when you are liable to pay income tax. These are some of the taxable events that we are going to discuss in this video. First, we have selling cryptocurrencies for fiat currency. For instance, selling Bitcoin and receiving proceeds in INR. In this situation, you are liable to pay income tax. Now, to have a better understanding of this, let's consider a scenario. Let's say you have bought a Bitcoin on 1st June 2022 for $20,500. After little over a year, that is on 31st August 2023, let's say you have sold this Bitcoin for $29,500. And in the sale transaction, let's say you have incurred an expense of rupees 30k. Let's now compute tax on this transaction. Here, the sale consideration is that is $29,500 multiplied by exchange rate, let's say 83 rupees per dollar, which is equal to rupees 24 lakh 48,500. Then we have cost of acquisition that is $20,500 multiplied by say 82, it is equal to rupees 16 lakh 81,000. The difference between these two is the taxable income that is 7 lakh 67,500 on which you are required to pay tax at 30%. There are few things that you need to remember here. If you observe the period of holding that is the time period between date of sale and date of purchase is about 15 months here. Even then the cost of acquisition is not adjusted for inflation. So from this we can infer two things. One period of holding is irrelevant here and you don't get indexation benefit. So whether you hold this asset for 15 months or 30 months or whatever period the cost of acquisition is not going to be adjusted for inflation because you don't get indexation benefit. Third thing to remember is whatever expense that you incur on sale of cryptocurrencies in this situation rupees 30k this expense cannot be claimed as deduction unlike other capital assets like immovable property where this deduction is possible. Let's now see how loss is computed. For this let's consider the same example but Let's change the date of purchase to 1st April 2022 and the value here is $37,500. Other things are going to remain the same. So the sale consideration is going to be same. 
But cost of acquisition here is $37,500 multiplied by exchange rate say 82 which is equal to Rs. 30,75,000. And we have just seen that expenses related to sale cannot be claimed as deduction. So the difference between sale consideration and cost of acquisition that is 6,26,500 is the loss here. Whenever you have crypto losses, provisions of income tax is going to be a bit different. So it is crucial that you remember these things. One, this loss 6.26 lakh, this loss can neither be adjusted against any other income nor this can be carried forward to subsequent years. Now to have a better understanding of this, let's consider a scenario. This is the loss we have just computed. Let's say in addition to this you have salary or business income of let's say 7 lakh and crypto loss here is about 6.26 lakh. Usual practice is to adjust this loss from taxable income of 7 lakh and pay tax on the net income. But in case of crypto losses, this adjustment is not possible. So here 7 lakh would be treated as your taxable income on which you are required to pay tax. And this crypto loss that is 6 lakh 26,500, this cannot even be carried forward to subsequent years. So you'll have to just forget about this loss. Second thing to remember is if you have loss under any other head, you cannot adjust such losses from crypto income. To understand this, let's consider our first example where we had computed taxable income of 7,67,500. Now let's say in addition to this, you are eligible to claim deduction of interest on home loan, which is 2 lakh here. Usually this 2 lakh is adjusted against taxable income and on the net income tax is paid. But in case of crypto income, this adjustment is not possible. So taxable income here would be 7,67,500 on which you are required to pay tax at 30%. But this loss under house property that is interest on home loan, this can either be adjusted against any other income if you have or it can be carried forward to subsequent years and you have got a time limit of 8 years to set this off. Third thing to remember is, let's say you have bought bitcoins for a value of 1 lakh and you have sold it for 1.5 lakh. So you have a gain of 50k. Let's say you have another ethereum transaction where you have bought it for 75k and sold it for 50k. So there is a loss of 25k. Usually loss from one asset is adjusted against income from another asset and tax is paid on the net gain. But in case of cryptocurrencies, this adjustment is not possible. So here 50k which is related to the Bitcoin transaction would be your taxable income on which you are required to pay tax at 30% which is equal to 15k and you need to forget about this 25k loss. This is how tax is computed when you sell cryptocurrencies. Let's now go back to the taxable event screen. For events 2 and 3, tax computation is going to be very similar to the first event. For instance, for the second event, that is when you exchange one cryptocurrency for other, let's say you exchange Dogecoin for Ethereum. Now in this case, whatever is the value of Ethereum would be your sale consideration. From this, you are going to reduce cost of acquisition of Dogecoin. And if you have gain, then you are required to pay tax at 30%. Similarly, for third event, that is spending cryptos to buy goods or services. Let's say you have spent Polygon to buy a smartphone. Now whatever is the price of the smartphone is going to be your sale consideration from which the cost of acquisition of Polygon has to be reduced and if you have gain then you have to pay tax at 30%. Let's now talk about next three events 4, 5 and 6 starting with fourth one that is receiving cryptocurrencies as gifts. Let's say your friend gifts you Litecoin. In income tax law, such gifts are treated as movable properties and total value of gifts during a particular financial year, if this is more than 50k, then you are required to pay tax on the entire value. To put it differently, if this value is up to 50k, then you don't have to pay any tax. Second thing, if you get gifts from your relatives, then you don't have to pay any tax. Now relatives here means not all relatives are included here. If you would like to know what exactly is this definition of relatives and the concept of taxation of gifts, you may consider watching my earlier video, the link in the top right corner. 
Now back to the topic. We have seen that if the value is more than 50k then you are required to pay tax on the entire value and the next question would be what is the rate of tax? Here we have two views. Some people are of the view that on this value 30% tax is applicable while others are of the view that slab rate is going to be applicable. That is you are going to pay tax according to your tax bracket. If you are in 10% tax bracket then 10% tax. If you are in 20% tax bracket then 20% tax. But my personal view would be since this is considered as a movable property. So just like taxation of any other gifts which are treated as movable property here too slab rate is going to be applicable. And later on when you sell these cryptocurrencies you have to pay tax at 30% on the gains that you make. And the cost of acquisition at that time would be the value on which you have paid tax according to the slab rate. Now what if you receive cryptocurrencies as airdrops? Airdrops means free coins which are given by companies as part of promotional offers. But the question here is whether these airdrop cryptocurrencies can be considered as gift or not. There is no clarity as such but my view would be this also has to be considered as part of other gifted cryptocurrencies and the tax treatment would be very similar to that. That is if the total value is more than 50k then you would be required to pay tax according to your slab. Next taxable event is getting salary in the form of cryptos. Tax treatment here is very similar to ESOPs or RSUs that you get from your employer. That is the value of these cryptocurrencies would be taxed according to your slab and this would be taxed as perquisite. And when you later on sell these cryptocurrencies you are required to pay tax at 30% on the gains that you make and cost of acquisition here would be the value of perquisite. Let's now go back to the taxable event screen. So we can say that for events 4, 5 and 6 tax treatment is going to be more or less the same except that in case of gifts you have got an exemption up to 50k and in case of salary you can avail other deductions like standard deductions and so on. Let's now talk about the last event that is mining cryptocurrencies. Mining in simple words is validating a cryptocurrency transaction and this validation can be done by solving some complex math problem. Once you solve this problem you are successful in mining cryptocurrencies. And the next question would be what about tax treatment? Luckily when you mine cryptocurrencies you don't have to pay any tax which is a good thing or is it? Let's see. It is true that you don't have to pay any tax when you mine cryptocurrencies and you are required to pay tax at 30% when you sell them. But the catch here is this 30% tax has to be paid on the entire sale consideration because the cost of acquisition is considered as zero. Now why is this zero? Because when you mine cryptocurrencies you don't pay any tax so the cost of acquisition is considered as zero. And the next question that would come to your mind would be what about the infrastructure cost that you have incurred in connection with mining activities? Is that not the cost of acquisition? Unfortunately in income tax law that is not considered as cost of acquisition so you will not be able to avail deduction of such expenses. With this we have completed understanding all these seven taxable events. Another important thing to remember is TDS. TDS is applicable on sale of cryptocurrencies. Now we are not going to discuss about these TDS provisions in detail otherwise the video would become much more lengthier. So let's understand this in brief. Here the buyer would be deducting tax at the rate of 1% if the sale consideration is over some specified threshold limits. Let's now summarize what we have understood so far. Irrespective of the nature of income, whether you are into trading of cryptocurrencies or you invest in cryptos, you are required to pay tax at 30% flat when you sell them. In addition to that, surcharge if applicable and health and education says at 4%. Second thing, only cost of acquisition can be claimed as deduction. So expenses related to sale cannot be claimed as deduction. And in case of mining cost of acquisition is also going to be zero and you would not be able to avail deduction of expenses towards infrastructure. Three period of holding is irrelevant and no benefit of indexation. Four crypto losses can neither be adjusted against any other income nor this can be carried forward to subsequent years. And if you have loss from other heads 
then such losses cannot be adjusted against crypto income. Then we have TDS where the buyer is going to deduct tax at 1% of sale consideration over certain threshold limits. After going through the taxation of cryptocurrency related transactions, we can say that the government is clearly not in favor of crypto related transactions. That's why we have these stringent norms. There are some pros and cons when you deal with cryptocurrencies because the market is not regulated. So whether these norms are good or bad, we have to wait and watch. This is all I have for you today. Hope the video was informative. Thank you for watching.